thank you all for coming to this very important event. And I'm glad to see so many faces here. And I'm hoping very much that next year there will be even more faces. I'm going to give you a quick update on the status of the Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons, which is a crucial treaty, a crucial document that will, I think, play a major role in the eventual abolition of nuclear weapons worldwide. As several people have already mentioned, the difference between this observation today and last year's observation of the Hiroshima Day is the fact that the treaty is now in force. On January 21st, 2021, the 50th country ratified the treaty, and so that means it is now an actual international legally binding document, and that is very, very important. Since then, there are four more uh, ratifications. So today, the status is 86 states have signed the treaty, and 55 has ra have ratified it. What does it mean when a treaty enters into force? That means that the paragraphs, the, specific, the specifications, the provisions of that treaty are now legally binding on those countries who have ratified it. Now, of course, the nuclear weapon state have not ratified this treaty, so therefore they are not yet bound by its provisions. But, and this is the important aspect to keep in mind, every treaty contains a number of provisions and uh, that lead to the establishment of guidelines, regulations, rules, etc. And these get to be established once the treaty is in force. So in order to get that process rolling, uh, the Secretary General of the United Nations in April invited those countries who have ratified the treaty to come to the very first meeting of the state's parties, and that will take place January 12th through 14th in Vienna, Austria. So those countries that have actually ratified the treaty will meet in Vienna, Austria next January. And what will they do there? Well, first of all, they will start implementing the provisions of the treaty because in addition to the abolition of nuclear weapons, the treaty also envisions uh, reparations to the victims of nuclear war and nuclear testing as well as the remediation of environmental damage caused by the nuclear testing that led to the uh, development of nuclear weapons. So those provisions can already be implemented, and that's what is going to be a topic of discussion in January next year. In addition to that, the countries will lay out the guidelines and the timelines and specifications of what has to happen when a nuclear weapon state uh, decides to join the treaty. In other words, once a country that has nuclear weapons ratifies the treaty, there has to be a timeline uh, according to which that country will abolish its nuclear weapons. There has to be a verification mechanism to make sure that these weapons have actually been abolished. And all of those guidelines and rules and regulations will be developed by the states that have ratified the treaty, and that process will start next January. So, after five years of hoping and wishing that we would have finally an international document that prohibits nuclear weapons, what we are now entering into is the phase of implementing that treaty, of creating the frameworks that allow the process of Permit, uh, abolishing nuclear weapons to proceed, and I think that's a major step forward, and so I think it's a cause for celebration as well, and I'll leave it at that. Thank you very much.